So you're launching a lot of products and you're wondering, should I make a lot of different brand names or should I stuff them all under that one generic brand and maybe later on launch a couple additional niche brands and rebrand them? It's a complicated process and a lot to talk through. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, we'll answer that question. So here is an example of a brand storefront called Age of Sage. I sell a lot of random stuff. I've got Forever Roses. I've got tumblers. I've got gift boxes for mom. I even have randomly incense uh, and salentide and soaps and a bunch of other crazy things. Now, in my case, my brand with everything under one super brand name works out for me because it's exactly what I was looking to do. However, I own lots of different brands and I will show you. So if you go to Amazon on any display page and you click on the ships and sold by icon right here, in my case, Age of Sage, you can see all of the storefronts brands that are on there. So you can see Age of Sage, Holstit, Mobster, and Jobst. And in my case, uh, with Holstit, I would never want to have a gun holster brand under the gift giving brand. It would be very off putting to that demographic and vice versa. So I went ahead and just filed the trademark for Holstit straight up, launched a new brand. So whenever you're making this calculus, it is a good idea to consider can you put all of these things generically under one brand without upsetting? the rest of the demographics. For example, if you consider the fact when you're on a listing and you click on the brand name like this, it goes to the brand store. And if you are clicking on a brand store for Holstit, and I was trying to sell gifts for uh, women, it probably would be pretty off-putting. So uh, vice versa, if you were selling 20 different SKUs, products, whatever, under a generic brand name like Zuli Kitchen or something like that, you could get away with having a super big brand name. And later on, if one particular niche kicked off and did really well, maybe Baby Goods does good inside of Kitchen, you create a new uh, brand name for that and you're off to the races. Now, here is the pros and the cons to the situation, right? So I just gave you the con of the super big brand. It's having the, the single brand store where you can't link to different subcategories off the bat, and that's a challenge. The other big problem is if you go to change a brand name later on Amazon, it's a pain in the ass. I mean, Amazon has made it such a hard thing to just control your catalog pages on, the, on, on Amazon. So whatever you load the first time is very tricky to unstick at a later point in time. This is why a lot of people will do catalog deletions and re-uploads, and you're having to have a lot of ticket filing in your future. We have, at my Amazon guy, I have over 300 brands. We've probably done 50,000 SKU brand name changes, uh, and we charge 500 bucks per SKU um, in 2023. It's, it's that much hard work. Now, vice versa, I sell trademarks for $825. So if, they're, if you're on the fence, in my opinion you're better off getting that new sub niche brand. Because if at a later point in time, you're 50% sure you're gonna like uh, launch into second brand on it, and let's say you had 10 SKUs, uh, that is gonna be an absurdly high amount of work. And that will be way more cost prohibitive than just spending the 825 on the brand to begin with. Now, granted, you do have to spend time building a logo and building some brand designs for each of these sub brands. That is technically true. Uh, but I believe that cost is in the hundreds of dollars, not the thousands in comparison to trying to do catalog rework at a later point, trying to rebrand lots of different SKUs. Um, so feel free to check us out. If you want to file the trademark for a sub brand, go over to myamazonguy.com slash TM cost is 825. The other um, good thing to know is it's very quick. Uh, if you order from us within one business day, we will turn around your trademark number. And then within seven days from that, you can get your full brand registered um, on Amazon. So you don't have to um, have six months of waiting. That, that's, that's old news. That's not no longer the case. But this is specific to the U.S. market. So other countries may have some delays. But U.S. market, you can get a, um, a supplemental uh, filing here and get up and running on brand registry very quickly. Uh, so a lot of benefits to getting brands registered. You get brand, uh, brand registry benefits, A plus contents, 
video ads, brand headline ads. Uh, you can prevent hijackers after it goes on to the 1A principal registry with the USPTO. We have a bunch of FAQs if you want to check this out as you start to try and figure this out. I have a full brand registry guide video. You're definitely going to check that out as well. Um, but the FAQs, basically anytime a customer ever asks me a question, I end up answering it and then I shoot a video and then I write a paragraph and then I add it to my FAQs here. So I have a lot of good information about brand uh, identities and choices and trademark issues and, and a lot of that information. So to summarize our conversation here, I am slightly in favor of having the niche sub brands just due to the fact that if one of your generic brands, one of your items in the generic brand list takes off, it's going to be cost prohibitive to change it and a huge pain to make some of those changes later. Um, at the same time, if you're doing a, a Russian roulette with 20 different SKUs and you don't know which one's going to work and they're in 20 different categories, I probably would go with the generic brand and put everything under there. Um, so depending on your situation, you need to make a choice. Uh, but whatever you do, selling on Amazon, it's getting trickier than ever, right? So slam that subscribe button. Watch my playlist next on how to set up your legal entities if you want to do multiple accounts next.